Good. What a face. What a figure. No class. Next. Thank you, miss. Argue with that. 36, 22, 34. No argument. Also no class. Uh, thank you, miss. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, miss. Just step lively. That's it. Uh, uh, hold it. Hold it. Uh, you, miss, would you mind walking back, please? Oh, no, not at all. What do you think? She looks like a nice kid. Mm -hmm. Class. What's her name? Anne-Marie. Uh, dismiss the rest of them. Uh, Miss Marie. Yes? Well, well. Does that mean I got the job? You're exactly what we're looking for. Oh, how exciting. My agent told me just to come over. He didn't tell me what the job was. Is it an important part? Important? Are you kidding? I've looked at over 200 girls. Oh, that's very flattering. What kind of character is it? Well, she's rich, very sophisticated, very chic woman. Oh, how marvelous. Now, when we first see you, you're about to make an entrance down a beautiful 40-foot stairway wearing this gorgeous, beautiful evening gown, which must cost in the neighborhood of three, four thousand dollars $4,000. That's some neighborhood. And diamonds? The real stuff from Cartier's. Earrings down to here. A tiara up to here. $200,000 worth. $200,000? Oh, I'll feel like a princess. I mean, one who has money. <laughs> you like it? Like it. I love it. <laughs> well, that's her. She's the one we hit in the face with a pie. <laughs> It's Mr. Newman, your cleaner. Oh, my hands are full. What does he say? Uh, she's got her hands full. What do you say? <laughs> she should. Uh, okay, I'll tell her. Bye-bye. He said you shouldn't. Hmm, I thought he would. That makes two you shoulds, three you shouldn'ts, and one no opinion since I got here. Are you thinking about running for Congress or something? <laughs> no, it's nothing. It's something Italian tonight. Well, it's only salad and raviolis. That means you have a problem. Oh, Donald, do I have to have a problem to make you a nice dinner? Suppose I just thought it'd be nice to have a pleasant meal together. You know I love to cook. Maybe I only wanted to cook. Do you have a problem? Yes, I have a problem. It's a professional problem, right? Why does it have to be a professional problem? Italian means a professional problem. Chicken means a financial crisis. And grilled cheese or bacon and eggs means you had a fight with your father. You really think you've got me down to a T, don't you? It is a professional problem. Right. See? Well, okay. Well, why do you have to be in such a hurry to find out what's bothering me? I mean, you're always taking all the fun out of misery. You always take the garbanzo beans out of the salad. I never complain. <laughs> I was offered a TV part this afternoon. Small part? Important part. Small part. I play a very beautiful, a very chic, a very rich woman. And I have a great entrance. And I come out wearing this, this fabulous long gown. It costs like three, four thousand dollars. Well, that's great. Yeah. And, and I wear a lot of diamonds, Donald. Real diamonds. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. Uh-huh. And, and, I, and I come down this, this fabulous long staircase. Forty steps. Real slow. And then there's music behind it, and, and violins, and, and, and things. Beautiful. 
And then when I get to the bottom of the steps, I just stand there all, all beautiful and everything, and, and they hit me with a pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. I, I mean, all elegant and dripping with, the, you know, the diamonds and then coming down the long step and the music and boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know whether I want to do it or not. Well, now, now I know why all the precincts were calling it. Well, it's just that I feel... I feel sort of strange about it. I mean, is that the right thing for an actress to do? What do you think? Well, honey, it's hard to say. Well, it's even harder for me to say. I don't know, I just... I just can't be objective about it. Oh, Donald, I want your opinion. All right. Of course, I, I could probably make a, a hundred... A hundred and fifty dollars for this show. You'd ask, do I need the money? I need the money. But how badly do I need the money? That's a very good question. I need the money very badly. But getting a pie in the face is not exactly getting the starring role office of Paul Newman, is it? No, it's degrading. But it's not the worst thing. I mean, I get a good laugh, and, and who knows? It could lead to other things, better things. What other better things you'd ask, right? Okay, no other better things. But it, it could give me some money to, to wait for some other better things to come along. So the whole thing comes down to two things, I guess. Money or pride. And you think pride is more important. And I agree with you. Oh, Donald, I, I so appreciate your being this honest with me about it. Well, you wanted my opinion. And I respect it, too. In fact, I'm going to call Seymour right now and tell him to turn it down. Because pride and integrity are above all. Hello? Oh, Seymour, hi. I was just going to call you. Well, about that show where they want to hit me with the pie? $500? Just for getting hit with a pie? How could you accept Seymour? Well, what about my integrity? Well, what about my pride? Well, all right, I can't argue that. Well, all right, I... I have to agree with that. Yes, Seymour. Yes, Seymour. Yes, Seymour. Boy, that man just won't take no for an answer. He said I was being unrealistic. And I suppose deep down in your heart you agree with him. That's what you're thinking, and I suppose I can't blame you. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Donald, I really do appreciate you being so honest with me. Well, you wanted my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> told you a million times, don't call me at work. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Donald, there's just one more blackout in there. Well, good luck. <laughs> find my hot water bottle.
show my face on Broadway again. Honey, the whole thing was on the screen for half a second. It took two seconds. Oh, Donald, what have I done to myself? Nothing. You're an actress. All you did was play a part. Don't try to soothe your conscience. <laughs> what has my conscience got to do with it? It's your fault. You could have stopped them. <laughs> Hamlet never would have allowed them to do that to Portia. If they weren't in the same play. If he loved her enough, that wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> You called me 20 minutes ago and begged me to come over. Oh, come in quickly. Why the sunglasses? I'm so ashamed. But you're in your own apartment. Well, I'm ashamed here, too. Oh, I feel just terrible. Please stay with me all day. You will stay with me all day, won't you? Honey, I've got work to do. Well, if you're not going to stay, why'd you come? Because you said you'd do something drastic if I didn't. Well, you're too late. I already did it. You're kidding. No, and I'm so sick to my stomach. What did you take? About 30 chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> And a frozen pizza and two bananas. I told you I was desperate. Oh, it's a miracle you're still alive. Donald, what am I going to do? Forget about it, honey. It's all over with. See, it is not. Do you know how many calls I've had today? Honey, the phone is ringing. Well, I'm not going to answer it. Donald, practically everybody in the entire world watched that show. Honey. Donald, don't you dare. There, it stopped. Okay, honey, I gotta get back to work. Oh, please stay a little. <laughs> All right, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to become a big star anymore. It's okay with me. It's not too late to start over. I wouldn't say so, no. There are other things I can do. You could. Like what? Well, you could sell things. What sort of things? Well, I don't know. You have a wide variety of choice. For example? How about needles? Needles? For sewing. I know what they're for. Well? Well, Donald, why would a woman who's devoted practically her whole life to the theater want a career selling needles? I'm not making very much sense. You're feeling better. Where are you going? Back to work. At the moment, I am still vitally interested in the preservation of my own career. What'll I do if the phone rings? Don't answer it. Well, I have no willpower when you're not here. Honey, I'll be back as soon as I can. You promise? I promise. Okay. Nothing's changed between us. Not a thing. And <laughs> I'm still laughing. <laughs> you see? Honey, now look, get a hold of yourself and stay out of the kitchen. I gather you saw the show. <laughs> At first, we didn't know it was you. Yeah, I bet a lot of people didn't recognize me. Not until the whole screen was just your face. Oh. Even if I didn't know you, I would know it was you. <laughs> Mr. Bilandano said of all the parts that you ever took, this was the best. <laughs> well, well, thank Mr. Fontana for me. Everyone else in the building says so, too. Everybody else in the building saw that show? Whoever missed it, we told them this morning. You didn't. Oh, don't thank me, Anne. You gave me pleasure. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Good morning. Good morning. You remember Mrs. Brentano, my landlady? I've had the pleasure. Likewise. Well, I don't want to interrupt you anymore. If you need anything, just bang on the radiator and blah! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that, Daddy? What makes you think I'm looking at you? Well, I can't tell for sure, but your head is pointed at me. I'm staring into space, wondering. About what? About what's happened to you. You saw the show? Of course I saw the show. I've never worn a pair of smoke glasses in my life. My <laughs> bridge club happened to be at our house last night. You know what that means? Some of the finest minds in Brewster also happened to see the show. I uh, made some fresh coffee. Why would you do a thing like that? I always make fresh coffee. I don't want any coffee. Tea? 
Just give me one good reason. Well, tea is invigorating. Will you stop that? All I want is an explanation. Everyone is laughing at you. Oh, Daddy, that's not the worst thing that can happen to an actor. Charlie Chaplin's father would have been tickled to death. Charlie Chaplin's father doesn't own a restaurant in Brewster. Okay, for that, I'm sorry, but not for getting hit with a pie. All the great stars have been hit with pies. It's, it's practically an obligation. Obligation to whom? To tradition. Everybody's been hit with pies. Wallace Beery, Clark Gable, Carol Lombard got hit twice in one picture. I can just imagine how her father felt. Oh, Daddy, you can't take this so personally. You've got to understand, when you see me, you're not seeing me, your daughter. You're seeing me, an actress, playing whatever role she must. It's as if there were 10, 20, 100 me's. Must all of you get hit with pies? Of course not. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life doing it. It's just that a good actress has to be prepared to do everything. I even expect to get killed someday. Better dead than humiliated. <laughs> See, there's more proof. Everybody saw it, everybody laughed, and everybody's been calling to tell me how much they liked it. Hello? Oh, hi, Seymour. It's my agent. Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh, yes, Seymour. Uh, well, uh, look, I know they have an option on me to do the show again, but, but I don't want to do the show again. Uh, well, Seymour. Seymour. Uh, Seymour, could you just listen a little? <laughs> well, even though being on that show gave me the experience of an unusual moment, I don't want to be typecast. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to explain to Mr. Grissom. I'd like to explain myself. Well, I don't want him to think I'm ungrateful. Don't worry, Seymour. You don't have to understand. Just so Mr. Grissom understands. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You're going to turn them down? I am. I don't want to be responsible for your having to go around the rest of your life wearing smoked glasses. understand why you don't let your agent tell him you pay him 10% for something. Well, it's only fair. When you're not going to do something, he gets 10% of nothing. So you do something yourself. Like me going to see Mr. Grissom personally. <laughs> yeah, well, why do I have to see him personally? Because I need you for moral support when I have to explain this to him face to face. I don't want him to think I'm an ingrate when I turn this job down. You know, all it takes is one little thing and a producer can turn you off just like that. I thought he only did this one show. Well, that's now. But in television, you never know. This year he's doing comedy. Next year he could be doing tragedy like... <laughs> like the news. <laughs> Donald, will you be serious? And I don't care if it leads to another job or not. I'm going to tell him this personally. Now, listen, you be careful. You bring any real honesty into this business, they may never forgive you. <laughs> oh, Julie, not realize it, but you sound like a cynic. <laughs> oh, these are beautiful, Freddie. Just great, sweetheart. <laughs> but I want you to make the funhouse mirror a little bit bigger. That way, everybody will think the crooked shape is in the mirror. <laughs> Now, when the crooked shape walks away, it'll be a straight. <laughs> there she is. Little Miss Class herself. <laughs> How are you, sweetheart? Just fine, thank you. <laughs> You're the boyfriend, huh? Don Hollinger. Hal Grissom. How do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? Oh, class goes with class, huh? <laughs> Listen, sweetie, the reason I call you... I know, and, and believe me, Mr. Grissom, I, I really appreciate it when someone does something nice for me. And, well, I don't want you to think I'm an ingrate. But I just can't take that part. Oh, what's an ingrate? <laughs> About someone who's ungrateful. Oh, well, we're up to our ears in them, huh? <laughs> now, about the job. Now, didn't you talk to your agent? This morning. You see, once was all right, but you keep going on and doing it over and over. Not since this morning? No, not since then. Look, kid, the reason I called him back and told him that I wanted to see you was to explain that the sponsor loved the bit. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I really am. But it doesn't change my mind. And I don't want you to think it's a matter of money because it isn't. It's a matter of, well, I, I just couldn't consider it for a moment. What do you call somebody who won't let you finish a sentence? A woman. <laughs> yeah, how could I forget? I'm sorry. It's, it's just that I want to be sure you really understand. It's a matter of, of growth. You got a growth? Actress growth. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad you feel that way. You are? Why are you? Well, because, like I started to tell you, the sponsor loved the bit, but. And you can't ignore a but from a sponsor. But what? He wants big stars to take the pie in the face. Big stars? That's why I called you. We've got Julie Andrews lined up for our next show. Julie Andrews? Oh, she'd never allow you to hit her with a pie. 
Are you kidding? She insisted on two. And for the show after that, we've got Audrey Hepburn. But that's not fair. <laughs> What's not fair? I mean, uh, after all, the, the, this is my trademark. Donald, that's not fair. Well, honey, you'd already decided not to do it anyway. Well, that's beside the point. It was, it was just plagiarism. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that, that's when someone steals something you write. Honey, people have been taking pies in the face since the days of the caveman. Oh, Mr. Grissom, do you think you've let the sponsors make the right decision by using stars? I mean, after all, just because you're a star doesn't necessarily mean you know how to take a pie. So we get him a pie taker, teacher. But you've got a proven commodity in me. Not that I'm entirely enthusiastic about it. I mean, I have a lot of reevaluating to do. There are still pros and cons. This is not exactly the career that I had planned for. So why don't you go into politics, huh? Listen, with her gift to gab. Of course, I, I guess I could go on doing this bit for years, and, and it wouldn't bother me. Even though I am a pretty good actress, and there are other parts and plays I'd, I'd love to do. Is she uh, slowing down, or is she just getting up steam? <laughs> Definitely slowing. Taking everything into account, I don't think I'd be happy spending the rest of my life taking a pie in the face. I think I'd rather sell needles. <laughs> Needles? What kind of needles? Hypothetical needles. Now, honey, take it easy. Now, don't start fooling around with that junk. Something else will turn up. <laughs> don't worry, Mr. Grissom. She won't. Thank you for a very interesting week. You're entirely welcome. <laughs> You've got a nice but, uh, <laughs> lady. You're a very lucky man. I'm the one that's lucky. He's not only handsome, he's very smart. He makes all my decisions and does all my talking for me. <laughs> Well, you wanted my opinion. I hope you don't mind cinnamon toast, but I just couldn't bring myself to go near a bakery. Perfectly understandable. I suppose so. What do you mean, I suppose so? I mean, looking at it from your point of view. You sound disappointed I'm not doing it again. I thought you'd be thrilled. I am. In spite of the fact that the day after the show, I did the best business since I opened the restaurant. Everybody came in to needle me and stayed to eat. I'm sorry. That's okay, honey. I, I just have to wait until you become a big star to get rich. I appreciate that. You know, I had some fleeting fame myself. This morning, the Chinese laundry said I didn't need a ticket for my shirts. Oh, good. Of course, I didn't get my shirts either. <laughs> well, I don't feel bad at all. In fact, I feel terrific. How many actresses do you know that lost out to Julie Andrews and Audrey Hepburn? And let us not forget, I created the part. <laughs> 